whoever would catch with him, he would be out there throwing a football and, you know, I mean, he would go up to random people. He was cute, so everyone wanted to play with him. I mean, he burnt out the whole yard throwing the ball. He's always been very outgoing and funny and he's a little joker. Well, my dad was a big goofball. And like, I don't think I saw that he did it. I just think it's in my blood, it's in my DNA that I'm just born to be that way. Um, you know, shout out to Lady Gaga. But you know, that's just, it's just who I am. You know, I think I had a really good childhood. I was probably a year old and we moved to California. Um, my dad was in prison at the time. We lived in, in an area where, you know, you can go outside and do all that things, but when them lights, when them lights turned on, street lights, you can go in the house. You know, when I was in elementary school, uh, I've walked in two or three times our house being robbed, um, looking dude in the eyes, and you know, he just takes off and stuff like that, so. Well, you know, I wasn't, uh, we didn't have the cookie cutter mom and, and son relationship or family. I was a single mom and I had to work, you know, I worked a lot of hours. His dad, you know, he struggled with a lot of things, um, but he was, an, he was a really good man. He was a loving father and he had a really special bond with Manny, the one that you just can't, you know, you just can't give back to him, so. Sorry. Yeah, no, um, Manny's dad used to, he, um, Manny was in a lot of sports, so he would come down, he drove like three hours, and he would come down, and he would uh, always come and watch Manny's games, but he would always bring him a strawberry frappe or whatever that, frappuccino from the Starbucks, so that was their thing. They always got that strawberry thing, so I think he still loves those. When I was 10, he was supposed to pick me up on a Friday, and then I believe it was Friday, middle of the night, um, my grandma on my dad's side had called and basically told us the police found my father in like the middle of the snow, and he was like frozen. They thought it was just, he froze to death, something happened where he fell out and froze, but it ended up when I was like eighth or seventh grade. I finally found out that it was a drug overdose and all that stuff, and I hated him for the longest. And I would blame all the things that I went through in life, all the negative things. I would blame it on him after he passed away. You know, I jumped from places to places trying to find the next best job and move here and do this, which, and then, you know, of course, when Manny's dad passed away, it was. It was difficult. I think I might have been running. When she moved to Las Vegas, I moved in with my uncle and aunt, and I moved to Vegas with my mom, and we got evicted out of our house. I lived with my mom's brother in Minnesota. I hated living there. We, my sister and I, we lived in like a basement, a uh, little closet. We slept on like a concrete floor. We just laid blankets down. And we got into a lot, a lot of arguments and stuff. And you know, I was kind of like just trying to protect my sister. We lived in Texas for about five or six years. I got in trouble my freshman year of high school, where I basically got kicked out of the school. Um, had like zero credits my freshman year. Lived with my grandparents in Colorado on a ranch, 45 minutes away from everything. No cell service. I got into it with my grandpa. Um, so I ended up moving back to Texas with my mom. I was a very, very troubled kid. I was, I mean, I would get in fist fights all the time just because I was angry. I was always angry. I, I wouldn't try to hear nothing nobody was saying. People have jokes sometimes, you know, like when you're younger, kids are like, your mom this, you know, the second your dad came out of your mouth, the kid was getting socked. I ended up getting a, a counselor, um, Mr. Westwood, I believe his name was. I wish I had his phone number today, because, I mean, he changed my life, really. Um, not a lot of people know that. We'd like go outside, we'd shoot, shoot hoops, 
Um, we just talk, you know, I kind of just get stuff off my chest with him. And I was young, so I didn't really know what he was doing at the time. We talked and I'd let the anger out through him, you know, I would cry with him, I'd be mad with him, I wouldn't want to talk with him some days. Um, I think the way that I learned from him was that, just expressing my feelings. Um, not letting everything boil up to the point where I need to hit somebody or something like that. Football has played the role of me releasing my anger. Um, letting my demons out. Um, my darkest times I played football and it was kind of like my getaway, my escape. I would forget about <clears throat> certain situations that I was in while I was on the football field. You know, I think I've really grown in that area as to who I am as a quarterback. You know, I think if I was like every other quarterback, that wouldn't make me unique and make me who I am. So my goal is to not be Taylor Kelly, be Mike Berkovici. You know, I want to be my own person, and I want to have some of the traits that they have, but I am who I am for a reason. I'm here where I am right now for a reason. You know, it comes with a certain level of eyes are always on you. Playing that quarterback position, it's not, it's not for everybody. Even times that we'd hang out when, when, when I was still playing with them, He'd just be like, man, look at look what my Twitter looks like. And it's just Twitter. If he had a bad game, people just fans just going crazy on him, sending them DM messages, like just bad stuff. I mean, as his mom, it sucks because it hurts, you know. And especially because, you know, he had a lot of situations and, you know, people don't think about those things. But he he doesn't show anything that it he he really handles it well. I admire him for that because I don't know if I'd be able to do that. One thing I've learned from him since I've known him is uh, really just just block out the noise. You know, he has a lot of people that, that may doubt him for whatever reason, a lot of critics that criticize him for whatever reason, but he does a great job of just blocking out the noise and, and staying in the moment and staying focused on what he has to do. He's done that for a long time. He just gets in his own zone, headphones and He's out, you know, and when they play that music out there, it's like, I mean, you can kind of see the calmness in his face. I think I kind of get my passion for music from my father. I just remember just cruising in his Camaro, his manual Camaro. I remember I used to shift, shift the uh, gears for him, but I just remember playing music all the time with him in the car. Oh gosh, he's been exposed to so much. I mean, he loves his Drake and his party next door so but you know he's been exposed to earth wind and fire to um, you know to Michael Jackson to Prince and then you know to Bay Area E40 rappers and uh, I can't make it go without the thing so I'm gonna have to do it just bare all right check me huh I'm gonna be singing John Legend ordinary people We don't know which way to go, hey, cause we're ordinary people. Loved it all the time, you know, it was always me, you know, three o'clock in the morning, little Manny playing his, blaring his music and thinking it's okay. When I have my headphones on, I just go into another world. It's like, I'm the only one there. And it just helps me put, get, put myself in a position where I'm just, I'm just level. I'm not too high, I'm not too low, I get level, I'm grounded. And I think that's one way music is just something I could just go to and get my mind off of everything else and not worry about all the things that I don't need to be worrying about. I sing to myself. I sing to myself on the field. My favorite song is uh, Things and Such by PX. And I just sing, sing the crap out of it when I'm on the sideline and I'm just, sitting there watching the game by myself, just sing the words, you know, I just spill it all out. What happened in the past is not gonna affect what's gonna happen next, so continue to just bounce back from it. I pick a spot in the stadium now, before every game, find a spot in the stadium that when things are not going how I need to go, I just go to that spot, look at that spot, 
bring myself back to where I need to be and then on to the next play.